So let's talk about a couple things before we get going today. Um, the, the way that our labs are organized, if you notice inside of this repo, we have a directory called, and I, I think we're probably gonna get rid of these moving forward, but there is a directory called starter code. The way that this information was presented to David and I, there were a bunch of changes from day to day that got made to the code and we just had to pull the changes and suck it up and deal with it. But what I've done is because I don't like that concept of having to do that, I want you guys to know every single piece of code that's going into this Mongoose movies. There's not going to be any surprises or question marks. What I did is I went and refactored that last night in the instructions so that rather than just have you pull my starter code that has a bunch of changes and talk about the changes, we're going to go through and do the changes together so that you guys can see every little bit of thing that we're adjusting. So the first couple sections of this are going to be very, um, <clears throat> there's going to be some light refactoring. I understand that that's frustrating sometimes to go through and refactor. Uh, we had a good conversation about that after class yesterday, actually. And um, I understand that it can be frustrating to do that sometimes. But the first thing that we're going to do, I think, is, is go through and, and refactor this using partial views. Um, but the, uh, the benefit to having this set up as a repository is as I push, you guys will be able to pull this code if you're linked up to it. So I want to take this moment right now and ask if anybody isn't linked up to this and wants to be, do you want instructions on how to do that? Pretty sure y'all did it anyway, because it's part of the lesson. But in the future, like, I know when I took this course, I never really wanted to do that and pull my code. I just wanted to write it myself. But I eventually got to the point where I, I can't remember what exercise it was, but I had an error with something and couldn't figure it out. And it just drove me nuts. And the ability for y'all to just pull code like that and make your errors go away is very good for lessons um, because it eliminates that headache. So. If you do have any questions about that, feel free to ask us and just let us know. Uh, we can get you set up with that if you're not already. And again, uh, I, I go ahead. Yeah, I should be connected, but I, I just it always says like I, I have to move, delete all my files before I can download yours. So I just have never done it in the past. If you do that, git fetch dash dash all git reset hard uh, main upstream or whatever it is. Those two commands should fix that for you. Uh, but if it doesn't, let us know and we'll, we'll get you configured so that it does. The only way that wouldn't work is if you had um, a different branch name. If you didn't go and change your default to from master to main, that, would, that command would be a little bit different for you if that were the case. So you might get an error from that. But, um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you a little heads up on that. Like we're going to go through this lesson today. And the first little section of this is just going to be making it some uh, stylistic changes. And uh, we're going to add a show option so that we're able to show a um, user or a, what are we doing? Movies. Uh, but the point of this lesson today is going to be embedding related data. So we're going to build reviews out for our movies so that we're able to add a review to a movie. Um, David, could you look up the movie SVG icon that's in that directory and post it in Slack? It's in the starter code. It's in the public images folder. Just make that available for people to download because we're okay. going to need we're going to need that. Um, ben, sorry, quick question to know sure. to, uh, to to see the upstream uh, on, on Git. What's the command? Git remote dash v. So. I'm not going to do it here because it's going to look different for mine than it would for y'all. But you guys should have just an upstream. Because we haven't added this to a repo. But you should have that upstream linked and it should say this in it. Mine says origin. Y'all should say upstream. And it, it might also look a little bit different because I'm using SSH instead of HTTPS. So, but you should see that. You should see git general assembly SEIR mongoose movies as your upstream. <clears throat> cool. So we're gonna go over how to set up partial views so that y'all can use partial views when you're building your applications. Um, and then we're going to talk about defining schemas for embedding sub documents, which is how embedding works. 
and then we are going to embed a sub document in our movies uh, object. Our movies model right now, we just have the movie. What we're going to do is we're going to take out this cast, or excuse me, we're going to uh, add another field here called reviews, and we're going to embed reviews within our movie object so that we can then have a page where we add reviews and go from there. So um, it says right here, review the starter code. That's going to be setting things up to be a little bit pretty. So let's start by creating some directories for our, our partial views. So mkdir views slash partials. And then we're going to touch views partials. We're going to do header dot ejs and we're going to do footer dot ejs so we got a little bit of refactoring to do right because right now we have these two views but we're putting our entire uh boilerplate in each of these and that's just that's not dry right we want to don't we want to not repeat ourselves we're going to have a ton of different views by the end of building this app so let's organize them appropriately. Inside of the header EJS, you can go ahead and copy and paste this code. I wanna point out a couple different things that we're, we're doing inside of this code. So that goes in header EJS. And I'm gonna go full screen to point some of this stuff out. Wait, um, which file is this? Which MD file? Um, it's in the lesson plan for today. Let me post it real quick here. And I will paste this just in case you don't have that handy. So a couple things about this file <clears throat> are the changes that we made. Uh, we are now adding our title for the page and our title in an H1 dynamically. So we're going to need to go add that to our um, controller functions so that we're displaying the name, the title of the page. So we're gonna get to that down in a minute. I just wanted you to see that there. The other thing that we're doing is we're adding this images uh, camera.svg and that is going to be a file that David links right now. And you can go ahead and download that file and go ahead and open up your, where is it? Public directory, open up your images. Let's do this. Download that file and you can drag that straight from your browser into your images directory. And that's what it looks like. So just as a recap, the changes we're making we're creating this header.ejs and that's going to have our boilerplate in it. We're opening up our body and our main tag. A main is just going to be a section that we use. And then we're going to close our main, our body, and our HTML in our footer. So any of our views that we render have to have a header and a footer to work. We'll see that here. We've got, we're opening up HTML. This doesn't have a closing tag inside this, this form or inside of this file. It has an opening body tag, doesn't have a closing body tag. It has an opening main tag, doesn't have a closing main tag. If you just use this, your HTML is gonna look funky. So when we refactor our two views that we've got so far and using all of our subsequent views, we're going to have to make sure that we put the, include our header and our footer in both of those. And we'll go step by step with this. So right beneath there is the footer EJS. I'll copy, I'll paste this again in Slack just in case anybody doesn't have a lesson up. But that's what goes inside of our footer.ejs. And that's just closing those tags out so that we're good to go on that. Anybody have any questions on what we just did? Just set up our partials. Haven't included them yet. All we did was just stub up the code for those. 
So let's go refactor our views a little bit. Inside of our index.ejs, what we're going to want to do is delete everything from this title up so that we just start with the table. And then we're going to delete everything from the bottom of the table down. We're going to get rid of this add movie link because we put a nav bar in our header.ejs. I forgot to point that out. So we have a little nav bar here. So when we link our header, we're going to have a link to new movies and a link to all movies up top. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about how that works once we get this all configured and set up. So back in our index EJS, everything below your table, you're going to delete. So we're just, we're keeping everything within the table. And for styling purposes, again, I'm just going to give you guys the CSS for this because we don't have time to go over all of that, nor do I have the willpower. So we're going to go to table here. We're going to add an ID of list. We're going to use that again in our, our upcoming styling. So in order to use the header and footer that we just set up, we need to use the squid flipping you off, the middle finger squid, the EJS with one, with a dash instead of a, um, an equal. Uh, you saw that if you watched the videos this weekend or last weekend. So we're going to start up some EJS here. Use the dash, close it off, and we're going to say include. We open this up, open up a string, and we're going to do dot dot slash partials slash header. And we can copy this line and put it right at the bottom, right after our table. Oops. And we just change header to footer. So now when we browse to this page, it will be all set up with our header and our footer. And we can test that out. We fire up our server. Still looks a little wonky. That's fine. That's because we have to add some CSS. We're going to do that here in a minute. But you can go between add movie and all movies. Now keep in mind your add movie page is probably going to, it just looks like it did before because we haven't updated that with the nav bar yet. So that's going to be our next step. So now let's go to our new EJS and we're going to do the same thing. Everything above the form, we're going to just delete. And we're going to put in that include tag for the header. And then everything beneath the form, we're going to delete. And we're going to put in the footer. And I will, once we get done with these uh, stylistic changes, I will push so you guys have access to this. The other thing that we need to make sure we add is we need to give our form an ID because we're going to be doing some styling with that too. So let's make sure we go up into our form and right before the action, give it an ID of new hyphen form. Again, all these styling changes, you'll see what happens when we copy and paste this big old mess of um, CSS code in a minute. So if you also, if you feel like the changes here are too much, you literally can just copy and paste this code from the lesson and it should work just fine. So as I mentioned, we are using in our header this dynamic title, right? We're going to have to pass in all of our views a title to our header to be rendered. Now, the reason this is so powerful is because we can do exactly what we're going to do and only put this in our header and every page that we want to view, we just pass out a title. And instead of having to make a new H1 for every single page, uh, as we do that in our HTML, all we have to do is pass out a title when we're in our controller function. So let's go back over our controller functions. And right here, when we're finding all movies, apparently we already did that. 
We have title all movies. And then back down over here, where we have our movies, uh, our new movie. This we haven't passed it there yet, so we are going to need to pass it there. So again, when we're rendering, the first thing that we put inside of that render is the uh, the file that we want to render, and we put a comma, open up an object, and we're going to be passing it title of string add movie. These spaces are not necessary. I just put them so that it's easier for you guys to see stuff. So we've got that title add movie. Let's go check that out, make sure that works. So we go to add movie and we should still see our nav bar, which we do. So now our nav bar, we can go between our add movie and all movies. It's pretty sweet stuff. So the last thing that we need to do to make all this stuff beautiful is I want you to take this entire block of CSS and just replace the CSS that we've written so far with it. Copy that, I'll put it in Slack. I'm gonna go into style sheets, style.css, just select everything and paste right over it. And if you're looking through this and you notice that there are some fields in here we haven't added, it's because this CSS will account for stuff that we're going to add here in a minute. So our show page and our add review form, all of the CSS for that's already put in here. So we're not gonna need to worry about it. We just need to give it the proper ID. So let's check it out. Let's refresh our page. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's awesome. Oh, it's so much better now. Our nav bar actually looks like a nav bar. And you'll notice here, well, that's kind of cool. When I select one of those, it shows up as being selected. How does that work? Let's go take a look at our, uh, our EJS here and our header. So what we're doing is in this nav bar, this links up at the top, we're using a ternary. I told you they were magical. And we're gonna say, if the title that we're passing to this page is equal to add movie, then we're gonna give it a class of active. If not, do nothing. Same thing, if the title that we're passing is all movies, then give the class active. Okay, so what does that do? Let's look at our CSS. If you see our CSS, somewhere in here, It's a uh, nav a active, I think. I found it. Is that right there? There's active in there? Oh, right there. So what that does is it makes it so that any a tags with a class name of active that are inside of our nav bar are white. Dynamic rendering, awesome stuff. Dynamic styling. So we got that set up. Let me go ahead and add commit and push now. It's a good place to do that. Cool. Welcome to the show. Now we are going to take our uh, current code right now, I want to be able to see the details of a movie. I want to have a little section called details so I can see the details for my movie. So in order to do that, we need to add a link. You know, let's, uh, oh, let me open up the chart here with the routing on it. Where are you? Where did we put that? Is that in resources? What are you looking for, Ben? I'm sorry. The um, RESTful routing chart. I don't know if that's up there. 
But if it is, you put it somewhere, not me. It's right here. I know I had access to it somewhere. Okay, so here's our chart. So if we want to do a show, right, we're going to do a get request to slash movies slash colon ID. So we're going to get the player around with rect params that ID now using our database. So let's start off by going to, uh, we've determined what our, our route is, right? So let's go to step two. Step two in our, our chart is to create a UI that deals with that, um, that route. So we're gonna go over to our index.ejs here. And then right beneath release here, why is that not the same? You know what I bet? Bear with me for one moment. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is to match where we're at with the starter code. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to add our own thing. We're going to be wild here. So after the now showing, that's why we're doing it. We only want a list of movies. Okay, this makes more sense. We're going to scrap our MPAA rating, our cast, and our now showing because we only want those things to show up when we go to the show view, right? We don't want to show all those details on our index page. So we're going to delete those. Make sure we delete the headers for them up here. Delete, delete, delete. Oops. Let's come over here and put an empty header. And that's going to have our details link. And to do our details link, we're going to do TD. Inside of that, we're going to do an A tag. And our link, just like we talked about a minute ago, is going to be slash movies slash, and we're going to break open some squid here. And we have access to this as m dot, and this is where we get to use that underscore ID. What we used in the past uh, for your fake databases was straight up ID, but because the document object has that underscore ID property on it, you have to put a dot underscore ID to get this to work properly. And then inside here, let's call this link details. Very aggressive details in all caps. Let's go refresh our, our page and see what that looks like now. Oh, that's much cleaner. Yeah, that's why we did that. Now you'll notice if we hover over these, you can see all of our details popping up down, or not our details, but our links popping up at the bottom. And that's showing each of the different Mongo IDs for those documents that we've created. Neat stuff. So what's the route? We've dealt with the route here, right? Slash movies slash colon ID. So now let's go over to our router. Let's I interrupt right for route. just a minute, Pin. Please. If you're following along with the chart I made, this is literally the exact same thing that's happening in that chart. Just a heads up. So you can follow along and see all of the steps as we're going through and making it here. It's the exact same thing. That chart, by the way, is amazing. Thank you for making that. You all need to every, give David a round of applause real quick, everybody. There we go. Silent, awkward Zoom round of applause. All right. So we need to do a get request to that colon ID. Open up a new line, router.get. Remember, movies is implied because we're using our movies router. So we're going to do colon ID. And then we're going to use our movies controller dot show. This is going to be our show, our show function. Let's go over to our controller. Remember, this is the same pattern we're using every single time. 
we're going to add the function. I'll just come down here and we'll write a function for it. Function show rec res stub it up. And then this is where we get to use that find by ID that we talked about yesterday. So again, I'm going to write this using the convention that the error first function, if you want to use promises, you can do that too. I'll show you how to do that using promises as well. We're going to go movie using our model to perform CRUD operations dot find by ID. And remember when we talked about this, the first thing that we pass to this has to be the ID of the movie that we want to look up. Hang on a second. Get out of here. Come on. So the ID is being passed in as rec.params.id. Remember, our, on our route, whatever we assign or whatever we pass in in our path is going to be assigned to rec.params.id. And because we're passing the ID of the movie, inside of our controller function, we can say rec.params.id. After we found that, we have to uh, use our callback function. So we're going to say function error comma and the error this error first callback function the second thing that comes in here is whatever we're returning by our or from our query so we're going to type movie because that logically makes sense we're looking up one movie this should be called movie we can call this whatever we want doesn't matter what we call it but we're going to call it something logical because that's what we're looking up open up that function for the callback and then what do we want to do we want to render a new page, a new view. We're going to write a view to show all the details for our movie. So let's do res.render. And we're going to do movies slash show. Haven't created it yet. We're going to go do that here in just a moment. We're going to pass to that view. Remember, open up your object. We're going to give it a title of add or movie detail. I'm going to say details comma, we want to pass it that movie that we defined right up here. Remember, if you wanted to, you could do movie, movie. Same thing. This first movie refers to what we're passing to the page. The second movie refers to whatever we are, like the actual data that we're passing to the page, which is right up here. I'm just going to leave it as a movie. You will find instances where it makes sense to do that. This is obviously not one of them because it's it's called the same thing. Um, quick question. Um, sure. Can you go over that rec.params again? Sure. And why why we why we use that? Absolutely. So when we set up this link on our view page, right, our index page, we set it up so that we have an a tag, an anchor tag that has a reference of slash movies slash movie dot underscore ID. And when we created all these movies, we gave them an ID in Mongo in our Mongo database. We gave them that dot underscore ID property. If you want to see that, you can see that inside of our little doodad right here. Movies, movies. So each of these movies has an ID property. So what we're doing is we're accessing that and we're saying, you know what? I want to look this movie up. I want to look it up by its ID. So let's pass that ID to the link. Because we're putting this link after movies right here and passing it to our route, our route is going to look for anything that comes after that in a get request and say, okay, whatever is after that, I'm going to set it as ID in rec.params. So your request object has a params uh, object attached to it. And we're going to attach this as ID to that object. So that whatever we click on, whatever we put in that link when we submit that get request has the, uh, a value of what, it, well, the value is going to be, it's a key value pair, right? Look, you can see that here if we console log it. So I'm going to comment this out and I'll show you this. Let's console log rec.params, params. 
So when I do that, if I click on one of these links, right down here, you see that it's console logging rec.params. And what we've given it is rec.params.id, and it's the ID of that document that we created. Does that clear that up? Cool. Sorry, I, I know that we just talked about this for like five minutes. Is it, what is the reason why we rec.params.id instead of like rec.params.underscore id? Because the id, we're passing the id in right here as dot underscore id. That's what it's called in the Mongo document, right? The, our, our document has that property. But what we're doing in our routes is we're saying, just call it id. I see. Okay, cool. I got you. I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. If, I got you. If I change this to taco and we go back into our controllers, this would now be what? It'd be taco. Rec.params.taco. Taco. Doesn't make yeah. any sense, but but that's that's what the, the change would I, be. If you, I get it. It's because on the router, it's the address coming in from the browser. That's what I understand. Cool. So we've got that. We've got that. That show. Okay. Let's go make our show page. So you can either use a terminal or you can just right click here on movies, new file, show.ejs. I'm just going to copy and paste this. We'll talk about it all. I'll put it in Slack as well. So we've included our partials, top and bottom, header and footer. And we've also given this an ID of show page, and that will just take care of all our styling for us. We're passing, we have just a ton of divs here. We have a title with our movie.title, release year, MPAA rating, all that fun stuff. And then we have a ternary here with now showing yep or nope. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's click on a movie. There we go. Any, everybody doing good? Anybody have any errors with that? Uh, add show page. So now we've got our show page. We're getting there. We've almost got to the point now where we can start working on our related data. We're going to do some embedding. So as we talked about yesterday, we have relationships between entities, right? Um, in the Mongoose Movies app, we might have uh, a movie has many reviews. A review belongs only to one movie. Where, and also, a movie has many performers, but many performers, or a performer has many movies. So that would be a many-to-many -many relationship. If you think about it, that's a great way to, to demonstrate this, right? Carrie Fisher is not just in Star Wars. She's in a bunch of movies. And if we were to submit a review for Star Wars, that review would only be good for Star Wars. It wouldn't really be good for other reviews. But Star Wars has more than just that one review. So this is a one-to-many relationship between the movie and reviews. And we have a many-to-many -many relationship between performers and movies, or cast and movies, as we're going to be using it. Um, the important thing to recognize here is that uh, this is really just the perfect use case for embedding related data. When we look up a movie, we're going to get all the reviews for it. It just makes sense for that's for them to be stored there. Um, when we have our lecture tomorrow, we're going to be talking about referencing and performers is a perfect use case for that. Instead of storing all of that performer data inside of our movie object, we're going to store that in a performers collection. That way, if we need to change anything with the performers, we can change it once and not have to change it every single place that we've changed it. Or if we, um, uh, well, we're going to use populate for that. And you'll get to see why populate is so awesome and wonderful. Uh, but because the movie had, or the performers can be added to many movies, we want that to be its own data entity. We want that to be its own resource. So that's why we're going to set that up that way. But with reviews, we're just going to look the movie up, we're going to add the review to it, and then we're going to save it. That's basically the process that we're going to go through. So in order to do that, we have to have a separate schema for our reviews. We are going to set up a schema for a sub-document. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our movies, our movie model. And because we're not setting up a separate data resource, we're going to add a schema into our movie, uh, movie model. We have to do this above the movie schema. So go ahead and make some space over there. And we are going to do const review schema. Make sure you're using the capital S, camel case there, equals new, oop, not boo, capital schema. Because remember, we're using mongoose right here, or we're using a, a variable to store schema as a mongoose.schema. Uh, another thing here you could do is if you didn't have this line, you could just say mongoose.schema, and that would work. We're just shortening it by doing this. So new schema, open up the object, and then we're going to fill out the fields that we want for our, our uh, review. So our review is gonna have content. That content is going to be data type of string. And we're going to give it a rating. And that rating, open up an object, we're gonna say type number, capital M, N for number, don't forget that. We're going to give it a minimum of one, a maximum of five, and a default of five. Okay. And just like we talked about, having the ability to enter timestamps when we create data is really, really useful. So we're gonna go over here, right before we close this out, add a comma, open up a new object and add our timestamps. So we're gonna say timestamps or colon true. So now we have this handy little review schema, right? We can't export this because we're already exporting our movie model here. So what we need to do is we need to embed this. This is where embedding comes from. We're going to embed this inside of our movie schema. So what I want you to do is right below now showing, I want you to put a comma, and I want you to type reviews, and I want you to put an array, because it's gonna be a data type of array, right? We're gonna have an array of reviews, and I want you to write review schema. So what this is doing is this is setting up our movie objects so that when we are, we can add a review and push it to this object. So we can pull up a movie by its ID. We can say, let's like in, uh, for example, when we look at our controller functions here, when we're doing find by ID, what we're gonna do here in a second is we're gonna pull up a movie and we're gonna say, okay, movies, like this movie variable, when we look it up, we're gonna say movie.reviews.push. And we're just gonna push the content of the movie that we just, or the review that we just added. It's really simple stuff. You just pull up the movie, you add the resource that you're embedding to by pushing it in there, and you save the movie and then you're done. Then you either uh, render or redirect, depending on what you wanna do. So that's the, that's the process we're gonna take to get there. Does anybody have any questions about how we set up this embedding? Referencing is gonna look a little different tomorrow. Referencing is a little bit more complex, but it's also a lot more powerful. So just, just to review, we set up our review schema. The review schema has to be above the movie schema or else this isn't gonna work. And then we're just putting it in here as review schema. Mongoose makes this really easy, really easy. Why doesn't it work if it's not before the movie schema? It would come back as undefined. Yeah, it won't know what it is yet because we haven't defined it yet. It's gonna go top down. Hoisting. Yep. Hoist. I hate that word. Hoist. It's like moist. It's an H. All right. So let's talk about what we need to do next. We need to create a related resource, also called a nested resource. This is going to be a little bit different. This is on our chart. Our chart. But because this is a one-to-many and many-to-many relationship, we have to set a different route for it, right? So 
if we are going to do a one-to-many relationship like our movies and our reviews, we're going to need a post request to movies colon ID slash reviews, right? That's the resource that matches that chart. It's create a comment for a post is the example that we've been given. So we have to have a payload, obviously, because we have to have the content of the review uh, and the rating, but we're going to be submitting a post request to slash movies slash colon ID slash reviews. So this chart, uh, you're going to be tested over the top seven, but the reason to have this handy is because every once in a while, you're going to have some weird thing where you have to figure out how to handle your resource. And there are good examples down here for everything. So you're going to see that we eventually get to the point where we are, oh my God, we got two wrecked out params in there. That's crazy town. But we are eventually going to get to the point where you're able to access two different wrecked out params. You can put as many wrecked out params as you want on a route. I've written them with as many as three before. Um, that was a really ugly function, but it worked. Um, but you can set those up with as many as you want. So let's go back to our code. So we know that we want to do a post request to movies colon ID slash reviews. So let's go to our show.ejs. And what are we going to add? We're adding a form. So right underneath our section, we're going to take and just copy this form. We'll talk about what it's doing. So you can see what we've got here. We give it an ID that just takes care of styling. The form has a method of post and an action of slash movies slash, but this is what equates to slash colon ID because we're passing it the ID of the movie, the underscore ID of the movie slash reviews. That's just like we talked about. And then we have a text area box and then we have a select option with one through five. We have our submit input instead of a button. We're just using an input there. So let's take a look at what that looks like on our form. Go to details. Oh, that looks so good. Thank you, already entered CSS. Cool, so we got our little selection box, we got our review. What's the next step? Somebody call off and you tell me what the next step is. We're going to go to the router and look up the page. Yep, we're going to write our route. So the difference is that we have a different resource now, right? We're dealing with reviews. So we need a separate resource or a separate router for that. So let's go ahead and touch routes slash reviews dot JS. We also need to add a controller module for it. So we'll do touch controller dot or slash reviews dot JS. First thing we do if we add a new router is we have to add a new path for that router. So let's go over here, back to our server. Right up top where we put our first two, we're gonna add another one. We're gonna say const. Oh, this is gonna drive me nuts if these aren't counts. Actually, you know what? Oh, my life is happy now again. Okay. Oh, there's one more down there. Okay, sorry. It's a const reviews router equal require. Uh, slash routes slash reviews. What else do we need to put in this file? We have to mount it. App.use. App.use. What's that called? Mounting it. Middleware. Middleware. There it yeah. is. Yes, you're both right. It's it it we're mounting it, but we're mounting middleware. Yes. So let's go right to the high five, Corey. Yes. We're going to say app.use, and we're just going to leave this as a forward slash. It's going to get a little tricky now. 
because right now our movies router is using slash movies, right? But we're going to leave this as a forward slash because our route doesn't start with reviews. The path for the route we just set up was slash movies slash ID slash or slash colon ID slash reviews. So in order to allow flexibility for the inside of this, we're just going to leave this as a slash. And we're going to say reviews router. I have a question. I'm sorry if you went over this already, but why do we need a new route for reviews? Do we not have why do we the need? Same? Yeah. We could. We could throw everything in the same router. But okay. convention is that when you're dealing with a new resource, you have a new router and a new controller to deal with it. A new resource being a new uh, model, right? A new model that we're using, the reviews table? Technically, this is not a new model, but mm -hmm. we're just we're adding a resource, we're embedding a resource to a model. Okay. But yeah, you're on the, you're on the right path with that. Okay. Um, that resource would be a, a Mongo collection, right? Or ends up being a collection? Like performers. Performers would be a new model. Reviews is not a model. Oh, God. Reviews is being added to our movies model. But they're technically both resources. We're just embedding this one and we're gonna reference the other one. But every time you add a resource, you add a controller and you add a, a, a router for it. It's, it can be annoying because sometimes you're going to write like one controller function inside of it. But just convention dictates that's the way you're supposed to do it. So we set up our reviews router. So let's go inside of our router here that doesn't have anything in it. And remember, when we set up our routers, it's going to look the same every time. I'm going to type this out instead of copying and pasting it because it's important you guys see this. Express equals require. Express. And then right after that, we're going to say our router, const router equals express dot oh, router. The router should have a capital R. And we have to invoke it. Now we have to pull in our controller, right? Because we have to be able to say reviews control dot whatever. So let's say const reviews CTRL equals require slash. So we get our path dot dot slash. We'll go down to controllers slash reviews. And then down here, if you forget this off, which some of you have, and you've already run into this error, you make sure that you have to put here module.exports equals router. Let's take a look at that error so we can see what we get. If we comment that line out. So it says router.use requires a middleware function, but got a blah. So if you see that error, router.use requires a middleware function, that means you probably left this line off. Sometimes it's good to just like leave stuff off and see what error it throws. Like just look at your errors while you're coding. Like it, obviously while we're coding all this stuff, it's gonna be throwing errors left and right. We're gonna see another one here and we enter our, our post. Let's, let's check it out router.post, remember we're doing, now because we're not using the movies router, we actually have to put that in our path now. So we're gonna say slash movies, slash colon ID, slash reviews, reviews controller dot create. That's gonna throw an error. Why is that throwing an error? Who knows, before I scroll up and show you what the error is. We don't have a controller function. Right, so let's look up here. See what our error says, requires a callback function, but got object undefined. So it's saying it requires a function, we're not giving it a function. Makes sense, right? So let's go back over there, start stubbing up our controller. We don't have anything in here. We know we need access to movie up top, right? That's our model that we're gonna be using to manipulate our reviews. So let's require it, const movie equals require dot dot slash models slash movie. 
and then we can do module dot exports equals create. Still unhappy. Why is it still unhappy? We haven't given it the function yet. We're exporting a function, but the function doesn't exist. So let's stub it up. Function create rec res. Now our server's happy again. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to add commit and push here. I'm going to say stub up. Um, can, can you explain the path between um, our server.js where we just have the forward slash and the reviews router to our router and yep. the, to our reviews router um, where we have the slash means included? I'll tell you what, I'll start one step back from that. Okay. So if we go to our show page where we have this link, mm -hmm. we have an action to forward slash movies, forward slash colon ID, forward slash reviews. So when our server gets that route, it's gonna go through from top to bottom through these to match what that route is. So it's slash movies, slash colon ID, slash reviews. So it's gonna hit this router, index router. Let's look at that router. Do we have anything slash movies, slash colon? No, we don't even have, all we have is forward slash here. So it's gonna skip that. Next one it looks at is our movies router. So let's look at our movies router. This is slash movies, slash, we have one that's slash colon ID, but there's another slash after it with slash reviews, right? Movies slash colon ID slash reviews. So it's gonna skip everything in this function or in this router, and it's gonna go to the next one, reviews router. Well, we got slash movies slash colon ID slash reviews. So that's what's gonna run that function. Is that clear? It makes sense, thanks. Mm -hmm. This confused me at first. I, I was just like, if we're just gonna have one function for creating reviews, why not just put it with our movies? But it, it's exactly that same thing. I thought the same thing that you're probably thinking. It's like, just why, why don't we just, why do we have to create two separate files to handle this one single request? But it's just convention. So for our create function, the first thing we need to do is we have access to rec.params.id, right? The ID of the movie. We have to use that to look up our movie. Because we need to know what movie, what what movie, wow, what movie we are adding reviews for, right? In order to push a review to a movie, we have to know what movie we're pushing it to. So let's start with that. Movie dot find by ID, and again we're using rec dot params dot ID to look that movie up. Error first callback function function. Error. What are we going to call it when we return it? We're going to call it movie. Open up our function. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm writing a, a function, a controller function like this that has a couple of different steps, is I will actually write out like what I want to accomplish in pseudocode and a comment just right above it. So if I'm developing this and I'm starting off like you all are, I'm going to say, okay, the first thing I need to do is look up the movie. After I look up the movie, I'm going to push the reviews into the movie. And then anytime you update something, you update a model that you're not using the find by ID and update or create, you have to run a save on it. So if we change any of the data in a model or like push a review into a model, we have to save it. That's a little different than what we've done so far. I know in our first day when we talked about, Mongo, or I guess yesterday, um, we talked about, where is that? Oh, controller functions, derp. All right. We had this down here. Now I showed you a different way to do this, the way that I would have done it. But you'll notice we've got, we're saying movie equals new movie rec dot body, and then we're saying movie dot save. The way that I would have written this, given the option, is just movie dot create, then redirect, because you have access to that promise, that callback function there. But 
because we're defining this and saying new movie, we're not using that movie.create. We're not using a mongoose function to do this. We're instantiating that movie. And because we're not using one of those preset mongoose model functions or methods, we have to run movie.save. And that same thing is going to be true for what we have to do now with reviews. Because we're going to look this movie up, but we're going to use movie.push to change that. And movie.push is not a mongoose function. It'll work, but we're going to have to save the movie after, after pushing into it. So having these steps typed out just kind of helps you with the flow of things, right? I love lists. I know a bunch of you probably love lists too, because you're, you know, a type people, a type personalities. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do what we need to do here. So we're returning it as movie, right? So we're going to do movies, excuse me, movie dot, and we're going to go inside of the movies to our reviews because it's a reviews object, right? Reviews. And that's an array, so we can push, push. And what do we want to push? We're going to push our rec.body because our request body is going to contain, let's go look at our form again. This form right here is going to have two fields. It's got a content field and it has a rating field. Sounds familiar, right? Take a look at our model. Our model, we have content and we have rating. Those need to match the name attribute on your input fields need to match the uh, definitions that you have in your schema for this to work. You'll get a type miss, or I think it's a type match error, a cast error. You'll get a cast error if these things don't match up. Um, I, you, I know all of you will see that at least once. So we're going to push rec.body. So now we've got our movie updated with our reviews. We need to save it because again, we're not using a capital movie function to do anything up here. If we had used movie.create, we don't need to use save, but because we're using lowercase movie, the, 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 using a, uh, a method on an item that was returned by a query, we have to save. So we're going to do movie.save and save does, it requires that same callback function. So we open it up, function. That's how Scooby-Doo would say it. Function. Function. Error. And then what we want to do. What do we want to do once we've returned our movie? Review. When they enter a review. Probably stay on the same page, right? I don't know. If I submit a review for a movie, I'd, I'd want to see my review show up on the page. So let's do that. Why are we doing res.redirect instead of res.render? Uh, really because we're taking, uh, aren't we taking them back to the same page? We're not, we already have the page to show them where all the movie ratings are gonna come up. But why wouldn't I just re render that same page? Um, does that have to do with it needing to be refreshed? Exactly. If we don't redirect, if we just render, the data is not gonna refresh itself. So we have to do a redirect here. You will, I, this is a problem that everyone has when they first start doing this stuff. You guys are going to set up renders because you think, oh, I just want to look at the page. But in order to refresh, sometimes you're going to have to redirect. So we're going to redirect to, and this is where we get to use our template literals. We're going to type slash movies, slash, and we have the access to the movie ID, right? We want to go back to slash movies slash ID because that's going to take us back to our show page. That's the route to our show page. So open out the template literal string, movie dot underscore ID. Oh, it's beautiful. So I'm going to make a couple changes to the show dot EJS and then I'll push. Uh, before you push, uh, I think you messed up on the pseudocode and the last line. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. And and if it showed up an extra requires online too. Do what? Oh yeah, look at that. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so we have our create function set up. 
let's go ahead and edit our show page. And then what we're gonna do, let's, let's talk about this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if movie.reviews.length, we're opening this up, right? Here's the opening tag, here's the closing tag. So we're, we're gonna, you know what, I'm gonna type this out. If y'all wanna copy and paste it, you can, but I wanna type this out to show you what we're doing here. So I'm gonna say if, let's start my happy squid. If, movie.reviews.length open up that uh, the function for the inside of the if statement enter I split my squid so I got to add a squid there I'm gonna add a squid here this is how you would write this instead of just copying and pasting it so we're gonna say if movies.reviews.length. So if we have reviews, we're gonna display something. If not, we're going to say no reviews yet. So before we put whatever the, the something is in the middle of that, we're gonna say else, we're gonna open up another parenthesis. In fact, I'm gonna close it as well. And I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna put another squid here. And I'm gonna put another squid here. Whenever you write your code, it's really, really good to start with your squid and then deal with what goes inside of them because you're gonna get lost real quick if you try to do this by going line by line or something like this. So we have our conditional setup, right? If movie.reviews.length, if we have movie reviews, we're gonna display our movie reviews. If we don't, we're gonna say no reviews yet. So now I'm gonna take this table inside of here and I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And we also have this no reviews yet H5 tag that we're gonna put right in here. So again, what we're able to do because we have this movie.reviews.length is we can say movies.reviews.for each, we're gonna iterate over it calling each review R. And we can say R dot created at and put the time that it was created we can say content and we can say rating. Created at, where did we get created at from? I think that's the timestamp that comes with the, with the rec dot body. You're right, it does, it comes inside <clears throat> the object. We can check that with Created at, there you go. So that's why you want to use timestamps. Now you have the created at, love it. That's also why you want to have this cool extension. So let me go ahead and add commit and push. And you guys can start adding some reviews and checking them out, see if it works. Try it out. Let's refresh, fake movie. Wow, such fake. Add review. No reviews yet. Hmm. I got a 404. Mine worked. All movies. Uh, ben, you, you have a missing uh, section tag on your show. DJS, you didn't close your section at the very end. Is there a, on my show, show EJS? Yeah, show EJS, you didn't close your section off. You have an open section, but no closed section. All the way to the top. You yes. have a section. Yeah, you have, but you didn't close. Oh, why do I have a closing one? I copied the code straight from. Yeah, 
maybe I just here. Let's try something else. Let's add that was, review. That closing one was just showing you where to start pasting. I think. Oh, okay. Post movies review. Yeah. Okay. We ain't debugging, so let's figure this out. Let's look at this movie ID. Let's check out our database and see if our review is in our database. That's not that one, it's this one. That's 5F3D8. Zero. And it is not in here. I'll refresh, sorry. Still not in there, okay. So let's take a look at our controller function. Reviews, movies.push, rec.body, movie, movie.save, there's dot redirect. So, Next debugging step, console log rec.body. Refresh, test, okay. Content, rating, so that's working. Movie.save. Press that redirect. That looks good. Where is it giving me an error? It doesn't look like it's saving. Did I put in my model? I did. Reviews. Review schema. That's spelled properly. Let's go ahead and console log in here to see if it's actually creating it. Uh, maybe. Okay, reviews, rating, one. Just doesn't look like it's saving. I get the syntax right on my save. I did. Did I spell something wrong somewhere? It's working what for y'all, right? Database.js look like. Yeah, ours is working. Okay. I mean, I'm connected to it because I can see all my data. Disconnect from the database and reconnect to it sometime if that does it for me. On Azure. I'm using local. No, I know, but I'm like in your local database, sometimes connecting it from the local host and reconnecting it, like just to see if your database, if your data is uh, showing up in there. Oh, it's all right there. Oh, okay. Let's try maybe a different movie. <laughs> Weird. All right. There's something funny about my fake movie that... How strange is that? Fake movie, the sequel works. I must have done something when I was making that movie that messed up the data type. But yeah, it works. Such awesome. Give it a five. So we're good. Does this have stuff from your old program by chance? Maybe. Your old movies? No. I bet that's no, what's going I got rid of it. 
Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Don't know. Really weird. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Um, is everyone here? Anybody give me a raised hand if you're not working? Uh, I'm not working. I'm getting an undefined. Uh, right. Let's go ahead and see your screen. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Cannot read property length of undefined. Movie.review.length. Okay, are you passing? So here's the controller for that. Uh, go back, I think I see what your problem is. Jesus. Go to your controller function. Your other controller function. You're, you wanna, oh no, that's right. Uh, the error did say something about your show.egs. Yeah. Do you have the conditional for no review in there? Or should I just copy and paste? Yeah, you do. Um, oh, no, that's not it. Does that happen only after you've added a review? I can't even get to the review. So where did it go? So let's... Oh. So I can't read the reviews property on your movie. Let me see your schema. You spelled reviews wrong on 17. Oh my God. There you go. Anybody else have any errors? Wait, what? On server 30. Oh. Reviews router. Oh, reviews router, okay. Yeah, look at your reviews.js. Post. Spell <gasps> reviews wrong. Oh my goodness. I can't spell this. Cool. Anybody else? Errors? I'm going to add commit and push. It's going to take a 10 minute break. So I'll, I'll give you an 11 minute break. So be back at 25 past. Uh, no. Sorry. Okay. Well, random luck of the draw then. We got three questions right here. True or false, all schemas must be compiled into a model. Critique. Uh, false, because you don't need separate models. You can embed different models into existing models. Perfect answer. Is it more efficient to embed or reference related data? Robert. Uh, is it more efficient to embed or reference related data? I guess it depends on the type of data. Um, and as far as, you know, generally speaking, um, generally speaking, reference. No, it's going to be more efficient to embed because we're putting the data inside of that actual document. If we're referencing it, it's going to take extra steps to go and look all that information up when we run populate, which we'll see tomorrow. But 
referencing technically is more, or excuse me, uh, embedding is technically more efficient. So you'll see why tomorrow, because when, it, when we run populate, it's gonna have to run a separate query on each of those different items when we're referencing it, and it just requires looking more data up. It's still gonna happen almost instantly because we're not dealing with very big data sets, but embedding is technically more efficient. And then true or false, an embedded subdocument must have its save method called for it to be persisted to the database. Stay on. I want to say true. You are correct. We have to have to run save if we are embedding with that embedded subdocument, right? Because when we open our movie, we're saving it, uh, or we're opening it here as movie, not as capital movie. And because we're not using any of these special, awesome, wonderful mongoose functions on it, when we change the data, we're just using push. We have to save that afterwards or else it's not going to persist to the database. But a mongoose so, function, it would automatically save it, right? Like that's embedded in that function? So, yes, for create and for uh, find by ID and update, those will both save after you've used them. So if you create data like we did in movies, we're using create right here, or excuse me, we're using, we used movie.save here. We did this the backwards way. Uh, but the way that I wrote it over here in this function, you know, I'll comment this so you can read it. If we use movie.create, this automatically saves it. This movie.create will save the document. Movie.find by ID and update will also save the document. We're going to deal hot with how to play around with that. I don't think you guys have seen that yet. Um, but find by ID and update will also save the document. So that's embedding. How do we feel about embedding? Embedding is definitely the easier method of putting data into a database. Um, referencing is more complicated, but referencing is so much cooler. Uh, and so much more useful. So that's why we teach you how to do both. So for your lab tonight, you're just going to be doing part two of your flights lab. So let's go take a look at that. So this is what we did today in class. Um, goal of this lab is to add a, or add the ability to specify a list, an array of destinations for the flight. Uh, if the flight is nonstop, there will only be one destination subdocument in the array. However, the destinations array might have more than one subdoc. Um, yada, yada, yada. So you're going to create a destination schema that provides this structure for the destination subdocuments. You're going to have a destination airport and destination arrival. And that's going to be a date. The airport's going to be a string with e enum validation, so that it has to be one of those five things. Um, it's, I should have updated this to include the, all the cities that we live in. That would have been cooler. I just used the default example. Um, and then we have to add that property to the flight model. So you're going to have to embed that schema inside of your flight schema. And then we want to implement the following user stories. As a user, when viewing the list of flights, I want to click on detail link displayed next to each flight to view all of the properties for that flight. So you're going to have to implement a show view, which is the first thing we did today. That show page should include each of its destinations. Next, as a user, when viewing the details page, I want to be able to add a destination for that flight. Each destination, as defined by the schema above, includes an arrival date time and one of the established airport codes. Note, multiple destinations by po are possible by adding them one at a time. And then finally, as a user, when I'm viewing the details page, I want to see a list of that flight's destination, airport, and arrival. So let me show you what that looks like code it out, or not, not the actual code. Um, oh, crap. Oh, of course, it's the one that I shut down.
So if we go to add flight, we should be able to add a flight. Remember, if we put leave that blank, it defaults to today or one year from today. When we click on details, you should see the details for the flight. It changes later. You don't need to worry about change flight details, but you should see the details for the flight and you should be able to pick a destination airport, set a destination time, and hit add destination. I need to fix that link. And then that should, it should show the destination down at the bottom. So I have a, a bug in my code I need to go fix. But if you add multiple destinations, Come on. That's one oh, flight, 220 years. I know, right? So, so that is, that is your goal. Ben, should I feel bad, like if I'm copying and pasting HTML from the movies app into that? HTML? Or? No. Okay. Know what it's doing. If I were you, I wouldn't copy and paste any EJS stuff because you should be typing out the EJS manually. But as far as like tables and like table structure, like that's totally fine. This doesn't need to look pretty, it needs to work. Your uh, project will need to look pretty. Ben. So. Um, yes. So were you able to get it um, to show by default the date um, when you deploy it in a Roku? Like when you go to add a new one? Um, I think I did. I think I deployed that difference. I know that there are some of you, some among you who are able to do this. So you need to talk amongst each other and figure it out. But I'm pretty sure I was able to get it. No, I got it working in my other code. I just didn't deploy it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can get it to work like on the local, but once I deploy it, it doesn't show it like inside. It, it does it, but it doesn't show it like in this, you know, in this yeah. display, right? Since that's a bonus, I wouldn't worry about that. And again, but dates in JavaScript are just a pain in the ass to deal with. So that's why we put that as a bonus. It's not, not required. So does anybody have any questions about the lab? You guys have literally the rest of the day to work on the lab. We're going to stay here. You guys can work on it, talk amongst yourselves. If you want to work in small groups and breakout rooms, I can put you into a room together but you got the rest of the day to do that. Uh, I'm gonna be working on uh, rewriting some of the stuff for the lab for tomorrow, or for the exercise tomorrow. Tomorrow we will talk about referencing and might have a quick, fun API lab in the afternoon. Um, so tomorrow morning, I wanna hit referencing. You've got your lab time to work on that now. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna be doing code reviews too. So maybe not the API thing. Do we want to do some of those today? We're doing one on ones. We're doing one on ones. ones. Yeah. One on ones. That's what Don't we're doing. One on ones. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're doing. I totally knew that. So we're going to invite some of you guys one on one to come talk about your code. I totally remembered that. We're not just going to do that tomorrow. Yeah. So go work on your labs. David and I are going to pull you into a room one by one for one on ones or two on ones, as it were. And uh, tomorrow we will um, start off with referencing. Then we will have some fun in the afternoon with APIs. We good? Anybody have any questions? Cool. Uh, one quick question. Does the arrival date need to be ahead of our departure date for this project? I, I don't really, it, no. Okay. I, if you want to build the validation in for that, you can, but I'm not going to require that. 